I have personally owned and tested over 100 makes and models of Bluetooth speakers. Whether you are upgrading your current speaker or buying your first, there are many features to consider and decisions to make. I just did a quick search on Amazon and there are over 5,000 Bluetooth speakers available. Nobody has tried them all. Nobody can tell you which speaker is best. And even if they could, what's best for me might not be best for you. The purpose of this video is to make you an educated consumer. I want you to know what features to look for and what traps to avoid. I want you to get the most speaker for your money, no matter how large or small your budget might be. And if you are giving the speaker as a gift, I want to help you delight the recipient. If all this sounds good, please give me a like and subscribe to let me know this is the kind of content you want to see. Without further ado, I would like to present to you the official Boxes Upon Boxes Reviews Bluetooth Speaker Buyer's Guide. Before we get any farther, should you even buy a Bluetooth speaker? There's only one reason why I can think of that you shouldn't, and that's if you live in a very cold environment or a very hot environment. You should not recharge a Bluetooth speaker in temperatures below 41 degrees Fahrenheit or above 113 degrees Fahrenheit. That's five degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. Decision number one, are you going to use the speaker indoors or outdoors? And what I'm really asking is, does it need to be waterproof or not? If the speaker is going to be used in a dry environment, you got nothing to worry about. You can pick anything. But if it has a chance to get wet, if it's going to be splashed, if it might rain, if you might drop it in the water, then you need to worry about water resistance or waterproofing. And if it does get dropped in the water, does it need to float? Some speaker manufacturers claim that their product is waterproof when it's really only water resistant. Look for a IPX rating of seven or eight to know that it's waterproof, meaning it can be submerged in water for an extended period of time. If it has IPX four, five, six, it's water resistant. You can splash it, but don't drop it in the water. What does the X stand for? It means they didn't test it for dust resistance. If there's a number instead of the X, then they did. Decision number two, general purpose or specialty. How you intend to use the speaker often determines some of the other criteria. If you're going to use this in the shower, then you should probably make it waterproof or water resistant. It might also need to be water resistant if you intend to bring it camping, but there are other features you should consider like a lantern, an emergency signal, a solar panel, a weather radio, a power bank, things like that. If you're going to bring the speaker golfing, you might want a magnetic mount or a threaded mount so you can attach the speaker to your golf cart. If you are going to bring the speaker to the job site, maybe you want to run it off the same kind of battery pack that you use for your tools. It should probably have rugged construction. Maybe you want something you can wear. Depending upon your activity, a speaker you bring to the gym might need to be small, wearable, water resistant, but it might require less battery life. A lot of people like using their Bluetooth speakers for karaoke. If you do, you might want giant RGB displays, uh, multiple microphone inputs, independent microphone volume and reverb controls. Then we have the specialty category of novelty speakers. They emphasize form over function. They often don't sound that good, but you buy them anyway because there's something about them that delights you. They are often purchased as gifts. Decision number three, mounting. The speaker mount can greatly affect how and where you use a Bluetooth speaker. One of my favorite speaker categories is the living room console speaker. In that case, it has a tabletop mount. It sits on the table and doesn't move. While it might be stretching the definition, I also put handles and straps in the mount category. One of the most common mounts is the carabiner. It's a metal or plastic clip and you can hang it from a, a loop or a rope or whatever you can imagine. There is another speaker category for wearable speakers. They often have a spring-loaded clip that attaches to your clothing or a magnet that goes through your clothes. 
or um, I had one built into a belt buckle, or uh, I had another where you wore it around your shoulders and it had a, like a 3D surround sound experience for home theater. One of the least common mounts is the threaded mount. This is the same standard as a DSLR camera, camcorder, GoPro. Any accessory you can use with those things will likely work with a threaded mount on your Bluetooth speaker. Also less common is the magnetic mount. These are speakers that attach to a metal surface, although not every metal surface attracts magnets. And it should also be mostly flat or you won't get a solid connection. And not every magnetic mount is as strong as others. They don't all stand up to a rough ride, say if you're using it for your golf cart or, or whatever. And then we have the least common mount, the wheel and handle. These are reserved for the largest of floor speakers. If you have one of these speakers, you'll be very grateful for this arrangement. Decision number four, battery life. Just to be clear, not every Bluetooth speaker has a battery. Some are designed to be stationary and just plug into the wall. That's actually some of my favorite kind of Bluetooth speakers. If your speaker does have a battery, you will need to decide how long the battery needs to last between charges. Speaker manufacturers will often quote an expected battery life that assumes you are playing the speaker at 50% volume. If you're going to play the speaker at max volume, cut the figure in half. You can also increase the battery by playing at a lesser volume. It's really up to you. Some speakers do have solar panels, and it might seem like a gimmick, but in my testing, it does enhance battery life. If you're using it outdoors, and if it's a sunny day, why not? Some speakers allow you to use it as a power bank. If you are using this speaker, to charge your other devices, then of course it's going to affect your battery life. But it's a trade-off you're probably willing to make. Decision number five, weight, size, power. Generally speaking, the larger the speaker, the better it sounds. This is especially true for deep bass. Some smaller speakers sound really good, but most are easily driven into distortion, especially if your music has deep bass or even a lot of high frequency treble. Most small speakers sound best in the mid-range levels and at moderate volumes. Speaker power is usually expressed in watts. Sometimes they give you the RMS value, sometimes they give you peak. RMS is the one that matters. If they give you peak, divide it in half. But the watts aren't the only thing that matters. The drivers have to match the amplifier. If they don't, you can get a lot of distortion. The best speakers match the drivers to the amplifier. It is not unusual for a Bluetooth speaker to have a single full range driver. However, I like to see at least a passive radiator to help with the bass. This is especially true if the speaker is waterproof because that enclosure is sealed and the passive radiator gives the driver the freedom to move as it should. If you do see tweeters, that's generally a good sign. Uh, it's generally a speaker with tweeters is going to sound better than a speaker without. Decision number six, media support. By definition, a Bluetooth speaker will accept input from a Bluetooth source, but that's only the beginning. Some Bluetooth speakers are complete entertainment systems and offer a myriad of options. You have to decide what's a must have, what's a nice to have, and what you don't care about. This is a TF card. It allows you to store music locally and not rely on a Bluetooth input. If your speaker has a rubber plug covering the ports, these often fit inside. This is a memory stick. They also call it a U drive. This is also a U drive. These all support external storage. But how the music is played back depends on your Bluetooth speaker. Some only play the music back in the order in which it was written. Some allow you to select a track, and some allow you to repeat songs, repeat one song, repeat all songs, or random mode. I realize we are getting into periphery features here, but some Bluetooth speakers allow you to play compact discs or audio cassettes. AM, or FM radio, weather radio, aircraft band radio, shortwave radio, 
Some Bluetooth speakers have inputs for guitar or microphones. You really have to decide how you want to use the speaker and then find one that has what you need. Decision number seven, wireless connections. Some speakers on the market are standalone speakers, but many offer a wireless connection to one or more other speakers. The most common standard is TWS, True Wireless Stereo. Most recorded music is recorded as stereo music, and TWS allows you to take two identical mono speakers and turn them into a left and right channel experience. It also happens to double the power because now you have two speakers and they're twice as loud as a single speaker. Some speakers are sold in pairs and support TWS mode right out of the box by default. Other speakers connect to two or more speakers. And when you do this, it's no longer stereo, it's more duplicated sound. You designate one speaker as the primary speaker and then all of the other speakers duplicate what's going on there. The volume goes up, the volume goes down, all at the same time. They're all playing the same thing. And you are making the power that much greater because for every speaker you are exponentially, well, it's not exponential, but you're multiplying the power. I have tested TWS mode a couple of times and I love it. I have never tested these other standards where you're, you have three or more speakers. It, it does seem like it could get crazy if you have a lot of people with this identical speaker. But again, that's the limitation. All the speakers in this group have to be identical. I've tried similar speakers by the same manufacturer that are just off by like one feature and it doesn't work. They have to be identical. Decision number nine, RGB lighting. Some Bluetooth speakers don't have any RGB lighting. Others have these elaborate lighting modes that are practically animations. Speakers that are classified as party speakers or karaoke speakers often have the best RGB lighting displays. Normally you can change the colors or the patterns or, or turn them off altogether. Some people don't think that RGB lighting is appropriate for every occasion, like if you have the speaker as a console speaker in your living room, but I think it often can be fun and um, sometimes quite impressive. Decision number 10, esoteric features. Esoteric features are a loose category of unusual features that don't necessarily serve the purpose of playing music. They share some aspects of novelty. For example, I had a cooler with an integrated Bluetooth speaker, or I've seen a couple of Bluetooth speakers that had built-in bottle openers, and I've had a couple of Bluetooth speakers that had integrated containers of ferrofluid that just kind of danced and made patterns as the music played. It's up to you if you think these features are desirable, although I think the bottle opener is a, a nice to have. Decision 11, budget. I have tested speakers that were essentially free and one that was as high as $600. You generally get what you pay for, but there are some speakers that are surprisingly good at affordable prices. One of the best Bluetooth speakers I have is from Bose. It is expensive and it is worth it. However, there are some lesser known, what I call emerging brands that are quite nice. Some of my favorite are from DOS, Zealot, and KMag. Be careful of licensed products. Sometimes they rely too heavily on the property and not enough on the quality. One notable exception is speakers from the House of Marley. Excellent. Decision 12, warranty return policy. One of the most common complaints I get in my speaker reviews is that I don't play the speaker during the review. Why? Because it doesn't make sense to me. I am listening to a speaker here. It, it then it is recorded by who knows what microphone. It's encoded in some video codec. I'm editing it on my computer and then I'm re-encoding it and uploading it to YouTube into whatever format they choose and then you download it and listen to it on who knows what speaker. Do you think what you hear has anything to do with what I heard? No. 
the only way to really audition a speaker is to hear it for yourself. But if you're going by reviews or what you're reading uh, on some manufacturer's website or or whatever, just make sure whomever you buy it from has a generous return policy. Because even if the speaker is fantastic, you might be the unlucky one that got the manufacturer's defect and you'll want to return it, of course. I just want you to have a phenomenal experience, whether you use my recommendations or not. And now, wrap up. After your speaker arrives, you will probably want to test it with your favorite music. If you are going to use the speaker indoors, try different speaker positions. For example, if you are having trouble with not enough bass, put it under your desk rather than on top of your desk, or stick it in a corner. If you think the treble is a little harsh, point the speaker toward a wall and it will soften the tone. If your speaker has a carabiner or a threaded mount, try suspending it in the air. Have it point at different angles toward your head. If you are listening to TWS mode, this can be a game changer. And if I can give you just one more piece of advice, half volume, three quarter volume, almost always sounds better than maximum volume. You will hear the nuance in your music that you just won't hear if it's blasting. I know, I know, but just try it. I hope this information is helpful to you as you shop for Bluetooth speakers. I'll put some links to some of my favorite speakers in the description below and probably a link to my favorite karaoke microphone. Please give me a like and subscribe to let me know this is the kind of feature you want to see on this channel. And uh, just talk about your favorite speakers or your most desired features in the comments below. Thanks for stopping by.